Hey guys, alright, it's time to talk about the Chow. Whether you like him or not, we're gonna talk about him. And now, let's look at... I mean, his STMR and TMR are just okay for him. Maybe get like two copies if you pull for him. Two copies of his STMR. Just because it has killers on it. He can equip other weapons. So that changes a lot of things, actually. It actually changes a lot of the dynamic of your team composition. If you'd like to use rods. I don't think claws would be as useful, or daggers, short sword. Uh, I think you stick to stabs or rods. So, I like this ability where it allows you to have multiple burst turns, but you have to be stuck to his using his regular LB. Um, so there's that. These two abilities have absolutely no, I don't see any use for them whatsoever because they don't have any imbues on them. He does have imbues by the way. But, I don't really understand what the point of this is. It's not like they have really strong imperils. So I, I just don't get what the point of those are. Um, and of course he has a higher wa a water um, amp. So that's at least something decent. He has some killers for every, for um, one ally. Strangely, he does not have the 150% for, for everybody else. Because I think Sylvie had that. Um... Interesting though that they're only a, on a one turn cooldown, which is actually kind of insane. Cause so you could set this up like one turn in advance and cast this on everybody that you need to do damage with. So that's actually, that might be one of the biggest highlights that he has uh, that I saw. Um, he can fill up his Magnus, but they're just damaged. Um, these two are just damaged ones, so that's okay, I guess. Does fill up, does fill MP though, which is interesting. And then strangely out of everything, you know, he's a Halloween unit. I was expecting him to be a darker light unit, but he's actually a water unit of all things. And he is locked to water basically on his LBS LB. So, um, if you don't have him in EX2, he does not get those charges until you use these. But if you have him in EX2, he gets two charges to start with. On those on those chaining abilities, if you care about that, I guess. I mean, it's pretty strong. <laughs> he's got the, you know the usual killers. Like he, they're treating him like a premium unit, but he's just limited time because his card is not good. If his card, if he was premium, his card would be 170 attack and magic, or whatever stats that would give it. And then the class jewel stuff, we already saw it. He has 450 percent uh, stat buff. And how do you get that? If you're ab above 0%, so you're going to be able to get that. And then you have 100% amp for all allies. That's interesting. And then, of course, like I mentioned, you guys have all these amps here, or these uh, imbues. So it's not like those things up there are like... I don't, I don't even know why they even exist. Because they're pretty bad. It's not like these. if these imperils are pretty high, this would be pretty good. But like, why does those... I don't know. But he does have the imbues. He does have some things from his other, you know, form. Like some healing and stuff. So that's something. And then, this is not attack. So, you would mainly use this on a magic team. But he does have 500% defense and spear, which is pretty good. So those are just skills. They're not really something you would chase unless you care about the magic uh, portion of it. And then... I was fearing that they were going to make him not have really good staff in peril, but he does have a good staff in peril. So that's something else. And you can use rods because he has 40% rod in peril. So that's pretty good. I think he's really strong. This modifier is very powerful, but I noticed that he does not have... Uh, let's see here. Nothing here. Does not have any uh, LB mod buffs at all. Just an amp. Which is strong, of course. But, there's no LB mod buffs in here at all. None. So he has a store buff, and 150% amp with no LB mod buffs. So I guess they just think that the morale thing is justifying it. But he's locked to water, and no LB mod buffs at all. So, I know that's going to you know detract a lot of people, because he's locked to water. So you can only use him on a water team. And, of course, he's going to work with Kaito. I think that was the point. He's going to work really well with Kaito because he can chain extreme overframes. 
um, which is interesting, I guess. But he's not. He's not. He's. I guess. He, I guess the 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 thing here is that you don't care about Kaito's damage at all because you never did. You only care about his abilities and stuff. So I guess he works with Kaito. That's fine. He's a very strong damage dealer, but is he like crazy? No, I don't. I don't think he's crazy. I don't think the shooting's like mad crazy. Like you gotta go out of your way. Like you gotta like go in your closet and smash the piggy bank and grab some quarters out and you know cash it in for some lapis or something. I don't know. It's not really. I'm not really feeling that. He's lacking an LB mod buff for his LB SLB. The field effects are not really worth it because we already know now in the future on the GP version currently there are 70% amps. So these ones, even if they are multiple elements, it's just not good enough. And funnily enough, there actually is a 70% water amp right now that just came out. So, yeah. Summoner's Declaration, what is that? Oh, he increases his Evo. Okay, that's pretty decent, I guess. Alright, so... He's good. But he's not great. He's just good. In the, in the grand scheme of things of how we're going in the game currently and what's in the future, he's just good. If we did, if if Neo Vision Plus and all those other units that are coming out aren't, aren't a thing yet, I would say he's great because he's, you know, like 150% amp, store buff, no LE mod buff though, but got Omni Killers and stuff. So he's just good. If, if that makes sense, he's just good. So I think I'm going to give him a score. Uh, I think an 8. Just a flat 8. Because his damage is very high. But he's just basic. In the grand scheme of things. I'm trying I'm trying to think of the future as well as right now. You just have those kill- I, I really like those killers though. Those killers that last for- I mean, Have only one turn cooldown. Which is actually seems like a bug. But it's not, I guess. Cause I don't think anyone's I don't think anyone's ever had that kind of a thing other than maybe Melissa. So other than not oh he gives them to himself as well, which is interesting. But yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, so that's gonna be it for this video. His vision cards aren't worth chasing. I say vision cards. His own vision card is obviously not worth chasing. It's not really that good. And then this card from the step up is just as not that great either. It's good for him, but you probably can find that water. Oh, I don't. It does, I think it does have magic on it. The the water vision card that just came out. That was the JP one uh, with the Bahamut on it. I think that one might be better. I think that one is magic oriented. If it's not, then it is what it is. But yeah, I think that card might be better. We'll have to find out. But, anyways, thank you guys for much watching. Appreciate you, as always. Let me know what you guys think about Chow in the comment section down below. Eight out of ten for Chow, and that's it. So, we'll just see where his damage lies. But I suspect that'll be up there, but probably not for not forever, because he doesn't have an LB mod buff, and he's water. So like. Not a lot of not a lot of work not a lot to work with right now with that. Alright, peace.